Good morning, folks. Yesterday was motivating, the type of day for which I've been waiting, with evidence accumulating, uncertainty accelerating. There's no time to waste then. Let's get to it over at spaceweathernews.com. And despite the fact that Earth-directed eruptions are still absent, we're finding significantly more surface activity than in previous days. Let's begin with the solar tornado. We've been watching him dance over the northeastern limb, but this will be our last sighting as he rolled up into the corona while lifting, and he released with a snap. CME will miss our planet. But what's this? A slight rise in solar flaring is presenting on the X-ray flux. Eyeing the northern incoming quadrant from SDO HMI, we see the birth of two active regions, each with numerous sunspots. These add to the disk total as we've still got those previous groups crossing the disk. Those were dead facing Earth yesterday, but with wholly negative magnetism, just red. But when we come to the newer sunspots, we see beta-class magnetism already, with several candidates having delta-class potential. Major eyes on them today. Watch above the Earth scale for the birth of the far-trailing sunspot. Hey, violence is never the answer, little buddy. Well, it should be no surprise that not only did we get a coronal hole earthquake alert come through the app yesterday, but the first-ever sunspot-based earthquake watch. Both in one day left us on high alert, so let's look at some of the forecast maps. For a few days now, we've not only been giving the red alerts, but the secondary alerts, along with what we'd need to see in these areas, like blot echoes, other foreshocks, atmospheric signals, in order to set them on higher alert. This is the latest description posted, and you can see that yellow was to be waiting for atmospheric signals, while the orange alerts were to wait for foreshocks, and that includes blot echoes. The map posted had one alert star and two lesser red alerts, and then the yellows and the oranges waiting for atmospheric and subterranean signals, respectively. Well, folks, right after that posted and not reported on any agency's map, a blot echo struck the northern Mariana Islands directly north of the orange line in northern Oceania. That stole the risk from South America, considering they were having crustal disruptions at lower magnitude, reducing the crustal disruption potential of the deep quakes. Then another blot echo due west of the northern Oceania orange alert, and, per the rules, South America went orange as Oceania went red, and just 10 minutes after that second blot echo, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck the Solomon Islands. Folks, it's one thing for a big quake to hit one of our alert zones, but when that alert zone is born, intensifies before your eyes due to deep earthquake transmigration, it allows you to utterly comprehend what just happened. Moving on to the climate now, where a new paper is out for those like me, wishing for a major rewrite to climate change science. It did show an increased minimum daily temperature under global warming schemes on a small scale around the world, but even given all the assumptions, they found absolutely no evidence of higher highs, just an elevated baseline. Up next, a reminder about why everyone needs to watch space weather. It would appear that the dangers presented by direct particle injection from the Van Allen belts and induction from the equatorial electrojet is just as dangerous as the aurorally based geomagnetic currents that spread from higher latitudes. Doesn't matter where you are, if the sun decides to rock and roll, there's nowhere to hide on this planet. So folks, first double earthquake risk alert results in an end to the large earthquake drought. Given that last story we looked at describing how scary space weather can be, that's a check mark on both main functions of the app today earthquake predictions, and space weather warnings. For more information about the earthquake forecasting, the methods, statistics, and links to verify it all so you never have to trust me or take my word for it, quakewatch.net. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. Big heads up on the U.S. West Coast and in southern Louisiana as storms should build big time tonight. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you